Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I'm here to try to tell you a defining story of a period of my life. Because you need courage to change things. And this is particularly true when you lead a global company that depends on your direction to survive. Being an entrepreneur, I know that I have to take risks. But with risks come mistakes. That is unavoidable. And you also need a little bit of crazy but without falling into insanity, of course. <laughs> well, I was just crazy enough to believe in something that others thought was impossible. Our company produces synthetic fibers for carpet and for textiles, and we depend on oil and on its derivatives. We would like to do without those depleting natural resources. And I found an alternative. You know where? A landfill. When I see a landfill, I see a gold mine. Again, you can imagine what people told me, that that was crazy, that was not possible. Well, what I can say now is the bigger the risk, the bigger the reward. Everything started on a tennis court, but could have been on a soccer field or on an improvised boxing ring in my childhood living room. And it is as valid as ever today in my work life. My father loved to play tennis, had four children, three boys and one daughter, and I was the youngest, and as you can imagine, I was forced to grow thick skin to survive. Well, I can even begin to tell you how many tennis matches, singles, doubles, ended up in knockdown, drug out brawls between brothers, or didn't even end, and this without a Hawkeye like at Wimbledon, and one day, my father was really tired with this kind of fight. So after one such battle, went home, brought some boxing gloves and said, now try. Guess how it finished? To my dentist's delight, I paid him a visit with three damaged teeth. <laughs> but believe it or not, I kept on fighting until I started to win. I had to learn quickly to face difficulties head on without fears. And this might have been why, when I had to compete against the big boys of our industry, I was not afraid. And we were going up against industry giants such as DuPont and BSF, really people who made the history of the chemical business. And we were a little Italian company making fiber for textile and carpets. They didn't even consider us as a serious contender and they were sure we would not last for long. Well, I'm here today, and they left this court. Just 10 days after I graduated at university, I began my career at Aquafilm. Well, it was a, a family company. My parents built a large textile group, starting from a small garage and six workers. And Aquafilm was neither the largest nor the most income important of these family companies, but was the farthest from home. Now you say, why are you saying this? For two main reasons. First, because being a little farther from my father was a little easier for me to begin, given his strong character and personality. Second, no relatives working there. This was what the distance meant. So, no tennis matches, finally peace. As you can understand, I was determined to make a name for myself without the support of my family name. It was not easy. I put my, all my energies into my work because in this life it's hard to succeed without hard work. You better buy a ticket of the national lottery. My companies were growing fast and rolling from one success to another. During those years, we diversified our business and we enlarged it, moving into the neighboring Slovenia, where I ended up going with my family. Now, I have to take a little time because without my wife, my bright side, I would not be here. I like to say that the success of a man or of a woman depends from the support of their significant other. This is very uh, important. And, you know, she challenges me a lot and she pushes me farther than I ever thought 
possible, both in my family and in my business life. Not only, she also helps me when I have to face problems that go beyond my control and keep me quiet and take me down to earth. And unfortunately, this happens from time to time. We businessmen, you see, I have no hairs, but uh, it gives you an idea what I did. Well, we businessmen, we love to talk about our success, of how brilliant we are, and magically, we are always right. The truth is slightly different. We are just like the others. We all make mistakes. The point is that we tend not to admit it. You know why? We don't like to be wrong. As easy as that. And by the end of the 90s, we had grown so much that we were considered among the big boys of our industry in Europe. And, surprise, surprise, we wanted to keep growing. If a company loses the desire to grow, it has a less brilliant future. So, what do you normally do in this case? Easy. You would like to take the profit of your customers or of your suppliers. So what we did? My parents did it many times during their lives. So I figured out, well, it must be a safe bet. I lost it. It was a huge flop, a terrible mistake. I tell you the story. Spring of 2001, after four years of market research and studies, we purchased two companies. Actually, I purchased two companies in the Slovak Republic. As you see, I like to say we when there are mistakes and I when I succeed. <laughs> to produce caprolactam, which is the magic name of our raw material to make nylon six. Well, as you know, as you remember, sadly, after a few months, September 11, the market was already slowing down before that day. But all of a sudden, everything stopped. Prices collapsed. So the caprolactam we were producing from oil had simply zero value. Believe me, it was a living nightmare. I have to say that September 11 was not the only reason of that failure. We made countless mistakes. We vastly underestimated the difficulties of entering a new complicated business. So I will take it short. We were losing the confidence of our banks and, above all, a lot of money. And we were facing issues large enough to make companies like ours go under. So, you know, something had to be done. We arrived at Christmas of 2002. I had to clear my head. So I went on holiday with my family. Poor Roberta. I was losing sleep at night and rolling in my bed like an acrobatic jet. Really. So, when I went home, I called my manager, who fortunately are also my best friends, my board of directors, and I shut everything down. It was one of the most difficult decisions of my life. And was it an enormous lesson, not only for my professional career, but my ego, you know? So, now you understand why I say that we make mistakes. Please, don't misconstrue what I am saying. I certainly don't want to encourage mistakes nor to maintain the more mistakes you made, the more successful you will be. Oh no, please, it is not like that. But simply, when you have to take decisions to your organization, whatever minimal or vital they are, you are subject to make mistakes. It is normal. Now, fortunately, here, here there are many people, and I need a volunteer who is going to explain this very simple concept to my bankers, because I would be delighted, you know. They make me crazy when I make mistakes. So, having said uh, this, uh, I didn't know it at that time, but there was a bright side also during those difficult moments, because without the people and the lessons we learned during those passing through that dark, difficult period, we would, we would have not been able to revolutionize our fiber manufacturing industry. So, landfills wouldn't be our gold mines and precious waste wouldn't be regenerated into our raw material. Now I see why I see landfills as gold uh, mines. Now, sorry, but I have to go to some technical uh, things. Synthetic fiber derives from oil and use resources that are limited in nature. They also consume energy, 
make waste and byproducts. Believe me when I tell you, natural fibers aren't much better and biotechnologies still far off to substitute for those raw materials. Having said this, synthetic fibers pollute the environment and with the exception of our nylon 6 are not renewable. I mean, yes, they can be recycled, but only to make lower quality products that at a certain point in time are going to be dumped into landfill or at best burn to make energy, which is not an ideal situation, is it? Luckily, we work in nylon 6. So 50 years ago, when my parents started, they said, oh, no, I make nylon 6 because one day Giulio will make an invention. No, it was by coincidence, of course. But I like to say that nylon 6 is not only different, it is unique because it can return to its previous stage and be transformed into a first quality pro product again and again practically forever. So, what does this mean? A plastic 906 product can be regenerated into a fishnet or carpet or into a piece of swimwear and this despite the form of its original end product. It's, it's magic, isn't it? Well, the technology to make this uh, regeneration is not easy, it's very complex and many people explored it in the past. But as soon as cost became a burden, they halted their effort. And this is because they didn't play tennis with, with my brothers when they were young. <laughs> and this was very difficult also for us at the very beginning, going all over the world to find waste suitable for regeneration. A plant that at the beginning was more often offline than in operation. Bureaucracy, bureaucratic speed bumps that were driving us crazy. I make one example because I want to shock you. For the European Union, sometimes you better eat, I'm not kidding, absorb those substances rather than transport them at the end of their product life. Incredible, isn't it? Well, the market took such, a, such an innovation with a very positive response. Who knows, is maybe consumer becoming more aware and purchasing more responsibly? You better think about it. Once we put the plant operational, a lot of people and companies from all over the world, they, they wanted to come and see it with their own eyes. They didn't believe to Giulio and to what he was saying. And I was really surprised when I realized that they were not, uh, how can I say, uh, taken uh, by uh, inspiration, looking at reactors that stood 30 meters tall and vast pipings and by the amount of money we spent to build the plant. They were simply in shock with our self-proclaimed landfill, which someone dares to call it a warehouse that was stacked floor to ceiling with post-consumer waste coming from all over the world. I want to give you a picture of the situation. Fabrizio, one of my managers, dubbed this warehouse AKS, any kind of shit. <laughs> it was a success. Once customer saw the this warehouse, the AKS, they still call it like that, you know. And they were so impressed about the effort of recovering and regenerating this waste into beautiful products that they went home and orders started to income and thankfully they still are today. So, you know, very good. Well, a few numbers just to understand the effect of what we are doing. Every, you know, the supply chain is not yet perfected and the more waste we find, the more we substitute oil with this type of raw material. It's not easy, but in a few years, 30% of our production from 2011 until today has gone to this uh, product. Well, every 10,000 tons of caprolactam, we save 42,000 tons of CO2 emissions and 70,000 barrels of oil. So only this year will be more than 150,000 barrels and more than 30,000 tons of post-consumer waste, which is not going to be landfill, which, you know, for us is pretty remarkable and exciting. Now, Econile, this is the name of this uh, product, is still young and we are discovering new and exciting things every day. 
And today I can say that the environmental issues we are facing are not slowing down the growth of GDP. No, are giving to companies like ours the incredible opportunity to change the status quo and to protect our planet. And we constantly work with our customers and our suppliers to make products fully recyclable at the end of their lives through redesigning and re-engineering them because we must not continue to put and to dump material into landfill. And this is precisely why landfills are our mines and our oil fields. So from a post-consumer waste, an incredible opportunity is born. And I like to say that today we can use our oil without drilling or fracking it. I stand here today to reassure you that there should be no fear in taking a risk or making a bold decision. Oh yes, you can be wrong sometimes, but it is always worth the try. The environment is pushing us to change and to find its bright side. Of course, you need to dare to challenge yourself to take risks as we did with our regeneration system. But if you keep trying and dreaming, you will find your bright side. Thank you.